hello everyone. For those of you who have not been with us for the past few years in our events, I'd just briefly like to introduce myself. My name is Gabriela Bana. Uh, I come from an organization called EOS, Educating for an Open Society from Romania. We're an organization almost exclusively dedicated to developing digital inclusion programs, but we do this kind of with teachers and with the wider community. We have been a member of Telecenter Europe for many years, actually ever since this start, and have been sort of hopefully contributing a little bit to the development of this network. Uh, I'm, uh, today I'm standing in front of you because our organization is a partner in this Unite IT project. Now, as Peter kindly introduced the project, you know, um, I, I want to take it a little bit out of the context of the project only, because really, it's, it is a project and it isn't. <laughs> it really is uh, the um, kind of baby of Telecenter Europe, if you like. It really is our pl platform of collaboration. Some of you might have been aware with Ning. I mean, how many of you have been part of the Ning platform? Yeah, quite a bit. There you go. So quite a few of you have been experimenting the Ning platform. And really, just to give you a bit of brief background, although this is a European-funded project, we kind of use this as a platform to brush up, to strengthen our collaboration platform, you know? And although uh, Peter explained there were seven Telecenter Europe members who come together to develop this platform, we really, we see it a bit broader than that. We see it as a wider collaboration of people, uh, you know, who work at the grassroots, so, through a common voice, we actually articulate a lot better what we have to say and what we find is going on on the ground to the European Commission, to the responsible authorities who should be framing the policies to help us better implement at the grassroots level. So, so this is kind of the philosophy around this Unite IT network. And I want to thank you all for, for joining the network. I mean, even if <laughs> some of you haven't yet done so, although we were invited through you know, the conference proceedings, I hope that by the end of this day you will be convinced that there is a lot of value <laughs> for you on this platform. Okay, so um, we, uh, I, I'm, I'm presenting this part of how far we've gone over the past year because within this partnership, our organization is basically responsible to deliver this yearly report. And basically like any a yearly report, you actually have to account to, you know, the progress you've made and provide some numbers and so on and so forth. But I, I want to take a little bit of a different approach when I take you through this, because the report you just have on the Unite IT portal and website. You can download it easy, you can read it. Should you have any questions, <laughs> come back to me. But I, I would like to, to kind of use these 15 minutes. I hope you're not too surprised, Peter. But I want to, want to convince you how, how, how important this could really be. At the moment, it has created some momentum, but maybe not the highest momentum we can achieve. And I think you're all convinced, hopefully just like me, that our collective voice is stronger if we're all together in articulating our key messages. So therefore, by the end of this, I shall be asking you individually about that. So a new portal. We have a new portal. You've seen it. It looks nice. It looks bright. It has all the old components of the Ning kind of website with lots of improved functionalities. And I think it's been reorganized in such a way that people can better focus on their areas of interest. The old version of the Ning was obviously uh, kind of a, sorry, a bit mixed up in the sense that it didn't have sort of clustered information. So I think we, we actually achieved a pretty pretty, pretty good portal. Um, we have 600 members already on this network. I mean, can I just ask you briefly how many of you are actually on this? Not everybody though. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I think, I think, I have, as I can judge from here, probably half and half. So I hope that by the end of today or tomorrow, I'm not setting a firm deadline, but <laughs> I, I hope but that in the next 24 hours we will see at least 20 or 30 more people. And not only that, I think this community of people is the core. If you don't have the people, you have nothing. You have no groups, you have no projects, you have no activities, you have no resources, nothing. So the people is really the most important thing in this portal. 
I would invite you to go out, get back to your organizations and promote our network. You know, the more people that come, the more common knowledge we can build. On. So, so I would invite, I know we have, for example, from Romania, from Spain, huge networks represented here with hundreds of telecenters and pub public centers that have people with IT. You know, spread the word, get them to come on here and, and, and share with us, tell us, tell us what's new in their lives and tell us their experiences about inclusion because I promise you this is how we'll grow and this is how we actually ultimately influence things. So please consider this as an invite. As, as I told you, we have, and as Peter mentioned, we have four working groups. Now, there might be more, you know? I mean, please don't take this as the final working groups that will be continuing forever in the network. Please see this as a living platform. If you feel that your particular interests don't fit in any of these four kind of wor working groups, please, please feel free to feedback to us. You know, maybe you have specific, I don't know, interest in programming or coding, you know? I mean, we can easily set up if there's a core group of people who have joint interest, no problem. This is how, how the groups have been structured so far, and it, it, they've been structured basically on direct feedback, which we got from many of you. But yeah, so please come and suggest new, new kind of areas, but we wouldn't want to extend this to sort of hundreds, you know, we still try to keep it clustered because, for example, I'm mostly interested in education and training, you know, and maybe a little bit with my, less with my organization interested in other things. So, you know, in the age of information, you just try to <laughs> be able to focus on, on, on the things of interest to you. So I don't think I should get into sort of details about what the four groups are. They are basically self-explanatory, you know, and all of you have probably read a little bit about them because you signed up for later on after the break. The day you will be going into your working group and actually exploring in depth. I also want to make this point, and I hope my colleagues who facilitate the working groups won't mind. We would like to keep the engagement going, and we want proactive <laughs> sort of uh, working group sessions where you all feed back to us and all kind of share your thoughts about how we can make these sort of working well and how, how we can make them dynamic and, and wh wh what's missing or how things should be organized because if they don't work for us as a group, they're just gonna die out. And we, we've all seen many projects with many groups, whatever, which were ex exciting at the <coughs> beginning and, and eventually, you know, after a project ends or whatever, they go. We, we don't want to allow that to happen and the only way we can actually make sure <laughs> these will continue is if we <coughs> kind of collaborate and find we have something to win, something to gain through being part of these working groups. So um, there's obviously also benefits for you if you do join these working groups because these are the areas where we promote new funding opportunities for the specific kind of uh, strands. This is where we run our exclusive webinars, you know, where we invite specialists to talk to us about various topics. This is the place where you can actually contribute to shaping some policy. Telecenter Europe is in a lucky position to be invited by the European Commission sometime to feedback on the inclusion policy papers. Now, Telecenter Europe as a staff can maybe do it, but it can do it a lot better with us, <laughs> you know, actually giving our opinion on, on how actually thing, things happen on the ground, and so on. Annual conferences, I'm not gonna dive in too much because this is one of them, <laughs> and you're all in Croatia and Zagreb. Um, as I said, the, the Malta one was the first one, which, which actually came at the end of the first year of development, but that was less kind of practical in terms of involvement of a lot of people. It was shaping up the network and doing the kind of theoretical part of the network, but this past year has really been the active one, and I hopefully by next year, by when, when we have the conference in Serbia, it will be a lot more of us kind of joining hands and wor working, wor working together on this platform. I want, though, to take just a one minute to talk a little bit about these practices and inclusion policies because this is one of the, I guess, one of the most important things that this uh, United IT portal has. 
Now, Peter mentioned that we have inclusion policies listed here and best practices. So far, we only have <coughs> six inclusion policies, and obviously, they've been, these are national inclusion policies. So, if your government has an inclusion policy, you know it is those inclusion policies listed there. I mean, some countries have them, some countries don't have them, dep depending on their political agenda, whatever not. But I would like to, to stop here and ask you to send us information about your uh, inclusion policies. You know, as at the telecenter, Europe level is basically living through its partners in every country. And, and, and I think we know best what is happening in our particular country. Nobody from Brussels can <laughs> follow in details about, you know, what is happening in Romania, in Hungary, in Latvia, in Spain, or what, wherever. But I think if we all are aware of what is happening in each other's countries, we have a much uh, stronger, stronger levy, leverage to go back to our governments to see, do you know what's happening in our neighboring country? You know, look at a good example of how an inclusion policy is being shaped there. Look at what has been achieved there, et cetera, et cetera, and try to push from our kind of national lands on that. So please, if you have uh, inclusion policies in your countries, please contribute them. I promise you it's not difficult to do. All you have to do is just download the template in this a lot of kind of picking and maybe giving us a link of where this uh, policy paper might be, uh, might be localized online or whatever, or attach it, you know, mm -hmm. through an email. It's not difficult, but this will really allow us, again, to, to, to know, to know what is going on and where we can have our input and where Telecentre Europe can focus, you know, the, the, their attention. I remember, Peter, maybe you can come up here um, uh, in the discussion. We had a situation where I think in Spain, you know, there was a lot of push of closing down telecenters, you know? And, and we, as a telecenter co community, really actually got together and, and <laughs> wrote an official statement and a paper in support of the telecenters and the role they're actually having in digital, including citizens from Spain. But only with this kind of information at our fingertips, we can actually move ahead and, and, and do that. Best practices, I don't think I need to get into many details. All of you are very experienced in developing projects, programs to do with IT, digital inclusion, training, certification, what not. <coughs> All our work is really important. And I tell you that my Romanian perspective, our organization has been doing this for 17 years, and I think <laughs> where we didn't do very well was to show what we have been doing. Because I think maybe some of the projects we've been doing might be a benefit to colleagues from Bulgaria or from Serbia or from other countries. I am a good consumer of uh, information. When I need some information, I go and I look at uh, best practices and I, I, I take some ideas and start implementing them in Romania. Um, I haven't been very good, I have to admit and be honest with you in sharing what we have been doing. But this project actually showed me, you know, the power of actually, and how easy it is to actually share this stuff. And this has created connections because I have people asking me questions about the project <coughs> we've been doing. So I can, I, I can promise you this is a benefit for my organization, actually getting together and getting two-dimensional links with many organizations across Europe. As you see, 76 good practices we have so far. So thank you all for contributing these good practices. I hope we will have many more. I know you have hundreds and hundreds of projects. So looking forward to seeing them there in the database. <coughs> Last but not least, please join us again. Please submit, as I said, your country inclusion policy. I think we have on the website, if you look, I mean, may, should I go online and then maybe not, maybe. I can uh, give support after, but it's really easy to, su uh, to submit any inclusion policy paper. It's really easy to submit your any good practice Please join our working groups if you haven't done so. I know there's not a lot happening there at the moment. <laughs> and if you log in and you look at the working group, maybe you know well, you won't ha find a lot of messages and resources or whatever. But this is the time to kick it freely off. And I'm really I'm counting on you to be doing that with you. I, as Gabi <coughs> Barna and as Eos, I am the uh, person who will be facilitating the education and training and certification working group. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you there after 
we finish with this conference. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your help so far. And have a good conference. Thank you.